we're back. Right, we are back here on Loose Lines. Tim Doherty, firstly, thanks very much for joining me, mate, as I said. And I just did a uh, toilet break. We're not here to promote the Albury Cup. We're here to promote boxing, uh, sorry, New Year's Eve meeting, bumper, bumper, massive meeting coming up um, for Albury. We did it last year. We want to get as many people back to it as we can, don't we? Yeah, we sure do. It's what we build our club around. Um, yeah, we're lucky. That we, we're afforded that date um, every year by the authority. So um, we've put a lot of work into it again this year. Um, worked in with council a bit because there's actually a big bash game on in Albury the Which same night. Which is super exciting. Um, anyone wondering, I've actually done an interview, but the audio... It, it didn't work. I still may put the interview up because it was a great interview. The mm. boys were really, really good. Yeah. So, yeah, I do apologise for that. But, yeah. Yeah, no, which, and um, the Albury Council's worked in with us a bit. So, there'll be free, bu free buses from the cricket, which should finish about 6.30. Free buses from there to the trot. So, it really shouldn't affect our crowd too much at all. And, um, yeah, it looks, yeah, it should be a great night. And the boys from the Big Bash are going to the track? Yeah, well, um, the Hobart Hurricanes, they've um, hired a marquee office and we've organised some catering for them. So um, that'll be a bit of a draw, car draw card. Um, like Matty Wade and a few of the you know, international T20 cricketers will be there on the night. So That's going to be great for the kids, isn't it? Young oh, kids. It's amazing. And, um, yeah, like they'll, yeah, they'll be really approachable. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just something different that we initially probably weren't all that happy with that it was going head to head with us but you've got to look for the silver lining in in everything and and make it work for us as well so we've worked in pretty well with them and i think it'll be a really successful night um you're you're a young club at albury but geez, you have a crack don't you we have we have had a real crack it's been a huge workload um and yeah well we are lucky that we're not super young. We're probably all around that 35 to 40 mark. Um, you want to punch in the nose now or you want to wait till yeah, we're off Yeah, I know. <laughs> I tell you what, some days you wake up and you feel old. But um, it, oh, it's obviously an honour as much as anything to be in charge of the club. And we've um, had some really good rapport with, with the authority as well. Um, they've really helped us out because we, probably Paul and myself and a few of the other young guys, you know, we, we put our hand up before we were probably ready to do it. Um, but it just had to be done and the authority's been really great. They've gave us some really good leadership and um, probably, you know, one of the, our greatest benefits is having Greg Gengel in the Riverina. He's just been amazing to work with. Paul and I, Paul Brown and I have learnt so much off him and it's, it's at a point now where it's a really good working relationship. You know, Wagga's not just here for Wagga, like Greg's Riverina centric. It's, yep. um, and, and that's invaluable to us. So um, we've really tried to grow that relationship and, and look forward to growing it further. Um, it must be good, oh, two points. One, you get that, that help, if you like, or that mm. help. But also, you're not alone, if, oh. you, if you know what I mean. Like, if you guys all sit there and, like, what do we do? Well, Absolutely. Yeah, pick a, it must pick be a, a phone relief. up. And, and Greg's probably found... Um, a bit of benefit in that the other way too yeah, like understanding um, the australian ways of the australian bit. culture and you know he's he's had a few tough tough moments up here and you know paul and i have both said mate we're only a phone call away we'll we're here to back you in because we're just so grateful that we've got him in the riverina and if you go and talk to you know your jack paintings your blake mickaliffs your blake jones the young guys that who are successful they just love this bloke um and you know, they, they can only see our area going forward, which we're really lucky. Well, I, I, like I, I keep saying thank you to John Dumsey, and I will say thank you to the cows come home because allow me to put the races on. Yep. I think changes it up. Well, hopefully we've got a yep. lot of people still watching the show and enjoying it, not missing a race and being able to see it. But forward thinking, you know, uh, New South Wales. But when I rang Greg and said, I'm going to come and I'll do the show live from here, and he says, oh, do you want the trots? And I'm yeah. like, well, yeah. yeah. And he goes, all right. Yeah. And he said, I'll get back to you by tomorrow. Yep. It was 20 minutes later, I'll get the thumbs up. I'm like, yep. yeah. Nothing, we brilliant. found nothing's too hard. He, but it's a know. little bit of New South Wales harness racing as well. It now, is. Isn't it? Like, there is nothing's too hard. No, nah, and John, um, we found him terrific. Like, with, you know, we a young committee that want to try a few different things. And, like, he's, you know, in full support of it. Um, and he's he's been terrific to bounce ideas off. Um, if we've hit a roadblock here and there, he's only a phone call away. Like, you know, at nearly all hours of the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, we've had it. Yeah, and and it's important that your club has a good relationship with the authority. I mean, we've all got to work in together, and and it's good just to have people involved that just love harness racing. And if if the love of the sports there, 
you're always going to do the right thing. Um, young community, how's the, how, how the, I suppose, the patronage, if you like, young trainers and drivers around the area? Really good. Um, we've had some really good fields this year. I think um, our last meeting, I, th- I think we're... Uh, at our AGM, we'd had of a possible, just don't quote me, of a possible seventy races. Going on the microphone. Uh, yeah, a possible seventy races for the for the year. We'd had sixty nine. We had one meeting where we didn't have eight races, um, which has been huge. But that's also been, you know, an, an enormous amount of work. Like myself and Paul Brown and Royce Gregory and Kevy Walsh. You know, when noms come out, it's not. You know, we're probably making twenty five to thirty calls each. Um, you know, if our noms are a bit light on, just to chase horses up. I know one Tuesday night during the middle of winter, you know, things weren't looking great, and and Paul rang up um, Robbie Walters on you know on behalf of Ben Yole, and they bought ten or eleven up, and it just props your meeting up. And now they they've been bringing sort of four or five or six horses every meeting. So that's that's what you got to sort of pre- you want people to come, but you also you got to get them to keep coming and coming back and looking after them and um and that's what we're, we really try to provide that you know we don't want people just coming for one meeting we want them to come back every time and, and make it somewhere they want to come yeah and be able to be able to enjoy it and that's by having full fields and it's not a boring spectacle you no know, it's, three and four horses going around the track absolutely and our tab turnovers increased dramatically off the back of that and you also you know your funding is is paid on you know, a maximum amount of races with a maximum amount of horses in it. So if you want to... So uh, you're encouraged to fill your fields? Oh, absolutely, because it's all, you know, you're going to get more bet on a 10-horse field at Aubrey than you are on a five- or six-horse field, and that's something that we've, you know, really hammered. And, you know, we, um, I think I said to you last year that we've really got to um, focus on those lower-graded horses. Um, you're up to, I think on New Year's Eve we've got an up to 40 and an up to 45. So, you know, you're probably going to you get a couple of both of those, and... And they're the ones that turn up in the middle of July on a Tuesday night. Um, yeah, so we're happy to put the good the good night of racing, put it on for those people that support us all year. Um, so New Year's Eve, um, we're going to have fireworks. What else? And you're going to have the Big Bash guys there. What yep. else can we expect? Yeah, so um, we've booked in. He did our Carnival of Cups this year. He's a bit of a local legend called Stevie Bowen. He's like a DJ um and the kids just love him. So we he sets up pretty much as a disco out the back of the grandstand and he just looks after all the kids on the night. Um, because that's one um, hurdle we've ran into this year is um, insurance of um, like your carnival type rides has gone through the roof. So there's not many of those around. So we'll have, you know, we'll have as many of them as we can. But um, yeah, we're really pinning our faith in Stevie Bowen and it was like at, at um, the Carnival of Cups meeting, we had my two daughters said, "Oh, Dad, can you just promise me he comes back for New Year's? Because it was just a great night, and yeah, he'll he'll get the whole crowd up and about." Always good if you look after the daughters. Oh, absolutely, because that, that, they'll have a job on New Year's Eve too, selling uh, race books or doing something. So we've got to look after them. That, that is exactly right. I think well done, Timmy. I think thank you very much. Just making sure we haven't got any um, things. It's amazing how people do this. Um, John Coffey couldn't remember a horse before Desiree Keating did. Uh, Rocket Jason was a horse. Rocket Jason, good horse. Yeah, well, John John, uh, John was in all sorts. He, yeah. There's nothing worse. You do this job and something leaves your brain. It and, does. And you, can't, you can't get it back. And people go, oh, why can't you remember that? And uh, anyway, so, yeah, no, Johnny, John uh, was right there and uh, MEO was on as well. She was on to it. Um, nutrient change things up, don't they? They oh, do. It's a well, bit of fun. It's awesome. I actually sold one or two at They're Ready to Run in Shep a couple yeah. of years ago. And, Actually, want to have a talk to Greg and the Nutrien guys at a later date to see if I've got heaps of yearlings that I'd love to be bringing back here in 12 months' time and have a day at Wagga and run them all up. Um, this track, if they can't run a bit of time on this track, they'll run it nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just, you know... Bar- there's, there's Bardo's here and that, you'll be able to catch up with them. Yeah, no, well, there's plenty of horses that are bred around here and, you know, we don't need to be going to Shepparton or Menangle this track if they can run. They'll run whatever they need to run here, so... I'd be happy to bring four or five to it next year if it was in our own backyard. and Because and, um, I just think, like Nutrien, they were so professional to deal with. And um, it's, it's just good to bring new people into the sport. Like they're, you know, Landmark or Nutrient has been such a successful business in agriculture for God knows how long. And that's one of the things, um, you know, like I keep saying, I get paid one, so there's no problem. Yeah. There. But 
the, the, one of the things they do, they, they've changed it up. People look ah. at it. But Nutrient itself is a very, very successful brand. The reason it's .com.au is because they're a worldwide company. 100%. So the, the, the reason you have to be aware of that, like you're dealing with professionals, oh. if Bardo don't know an answer, he can pick up a phone oh. to anyone somewhere else in the world and, and they'll advise him yeah, the right way to do it. Yeah, that's well, that's I, what our industry needs. I did an ag degree when I first finished school and had a bit to do with Landmark and Nutrien and that's what, like you say, they're at one phone call away and you're probably talking to a world leader somewhere. So, um, you know, I'm wrapped to see it here tonight. It's just great to see people back at the trots and, yeah, and that's what Greg and the Riverine is all about. So it's and terrific. this is a Tuesday night. This is not a, um, this is, yeah, your uh, Tuesday night, it's not a... Um, uh, no, it's no. not a marquee night, but no, nah, that's... Um, yeah, no, nah, I'm t just one thing before I go... Um, I'm not sure I even know who he's bringing, so you keep going, because uh, we might be in trouble. I hope Roger he's doing the interview. Strong, is it? Um, oh, yeah, it is too, thank goodness Stocko. for that. Um, our noms close, yeah, 28th, uh, Wednesday, the 28th of December, yep. so it doesn't really leave us much time if things need to be extended. Um, yeah, so feel free and if you need a stable or whatever want to stay up for the night and have a night out um, just get in contact with Paul or myself or hunt us down on Facebook our phone numbers are on the harness racing I'll work, Facebook I'll work, page. Facebook. I'll work some numbers up yeah, afterwards yeah um, and just give us a ring because yeah we'll cater for anyone and I'm sure we can find someone to stick around and have a beer with after the last if I don't catch up with the boys tomorrow what I'll do is actually cut this interview out we'll put yeah. it up as well but we want to keep putting a word out there so Timmy well done no, thanks, thank you very Paul. much for joining me mate yeah. and um, enjoy uh, you got another runner a bit later no on? no we're heading home now oh Head yeah up. two in no no just the one it's the only one I got in work the rest are yearlings so all right. Well, I, you need, so I need yearling races you'll, you'll have to talk to you'll have to talk to Bardo in yeah. a minute about that, <laughs> the, the uh, ready to run but it'll be fine Timmy don't you worry yeah, about that nah. but uh, thank you very much mate uh, good. have a Merry Christmas mate thank and uh, thank have you. a great carnival have a great night on uh, New Year's Eve as well so uh, Timmy Doherty joining me there you're right mate jump out that's all